So I think Davidenko will enjoy showing everybody this evening just how good he is. And of course, the Russian is desperate to try and defend his title. Russian won the toss and had no hesitation whatsoever in deciding to serve. Best of three tie-break sets. Fifteen love. Got a very high percentage of first serves in yesterday evening against uh, Ivo Karlovic. Took a little bit of pace off the first. It's a, a good ploy when you're up against a big server. We might see something similar this evening, but I think he might just be going for that serve a little more. And that's a good tactic to use against Nadal, the big one. First you spend it's four, and that one almost 200 kilometers an hour, so that's pretty big as far as Davidenko is concerned. And he's well aware that Nadal returns a little better off his backhand side, it's a more compact stroke. Gets a lot more balls back in play. Special for first serve. Thirty-fifteen. There's uh, the Russian's camp. He's got his brother and his wife here. They were in the gym. Uh, a little earlier this morning, the trio was, Nikolai was on the bike, getting warmed up pretty early. There's a few players Very on. who don't like uh, just sitting around all day long. They'll often have a little bit of a workout, just a very light one. Turn the legs over before lunch, get the blood pumping, then enjoy lunch, go back and have a rest before coming out to the courts later. Get a bit lethargic, can't you, if you're sitting around too long? Yeah, you've got to get the balance right, haven't you? You can't do too much. Then suddenly you, you end up <laughs> at the courts exhausted before you play your match. But nothing worse than lying on your bed all day uh, and then suddenly coming to the courts and, and you've got no energy. So, yeah, you've got to get the balance right. But these guys are so experienced that they know how to prepare for their matches that are played at different times throughout the course of a day so very much second nature now no wins for Davido in the, in the gym this morning he wasn't uh, working the beach muscles ready for Australia no no he doesn't have too many beach muscles i'll tell you what <laughs> that's what's so amazing about him jason is he's such a wiry figure yet he hits the ball so hard yeah he generates an awful lot of pace but he just looks like he's in need of a, a decent meal doesn't he most of the time <laughs> it just shows you the importance of timing the ball well nadal has uh, dropped a little bit of weight as well it's not quite as bulky as he used to be but, uh, they are very very different but both move exceptionally well, so very quick around the baseline. He's got the Bruce Lee build. So, a good start by Davidenko. Love one. Fifty love. Played last week in Abu Dhabi, defeated uh, Federer in the final in two tie breaks, six and six. So got a couple of matches under his belt. Made a bit of pocket money before arriving here.
tennis. It's not that Nadal needed any pocket money last week. Uh, more prize money last season than uh, anybody ever in the history of our sport. Ten mil and change, wasn't it, Robbie? Yeah, ten mil, 171,998 to be exact. Federer has gone close to that. Uh, I think he was uh, close to 10 mil a couple of seasons ago. But, uh, those two light years ahead of everybody else. Davidenko uh, made uh, just under a million last season, though, of course, he didn't have a lot of success, relatively speaking. Okay, if you can see you had your worst season for the last eight or nine years, you still earned a million. Yeah, and you had a three three month uh, break because of injury as well. Let's not forget that. Spends his time between Germany and Moscow. Official residence is in Monte Carlo, where he's got a place as well. And of course, the thing you've got to admire about tennis players is that uh, they have to earn every cent themselves. There's no contracts in place as far as uh, compensation is concerned. Obviously, the guys have uh, clothing deals, but it's not like soccer or rugby or cricket where you're, you're contracted and your money's guaranteed irrespective of the team's result. A lot of the contracts these days are heavily weighted in terms of bonuses, aren't they? So if Nadal has a season like he did last year and he's winning all the Grand Slams and he's number one in the world and he's winning Olympic golds and uh, he's going to earn a lot of money, no question about that. But Nike and Babalat are happy to pay it out because uh, he's getting uh, an awful lot of uh, coverage for all his accomplishments. But uh, if he doesn't and he has a poor year, he didn't win a tournament for uh, 10, 11 months uh, preceding last season. And then he's not going to earn as much. Simple as that. Yeah, forehands. He's picked up one or two contracts along the way as well, hasn't he? Mm. Now plays Welcome with uh, a watch on his uh, right hand there. And that's not to uh, make sure that he doesn't overstep the mark in terms of 25 seconds between points either. Certainly not. That's worth uh, just over half a million. There it is, Richard Mill. What's the name of that one? Are you hoping for one of those with a little name check there? Tell you what, there's not going to be one name check this evening. <laughs> Straight onto the 1 800 number after this match as well. <laughs> Love 15. It's very few guys, though, that uh, can pick up the kind of contracts that Fitter and Nadal pick up. It's, it's not commonplace in our sport, that's for sure. In sports in general, those uh, couple of guys that transcend the sport. I mean, give you a good example Davidenko's uh, struggled to get a, a racket or a clothes contract, uh, a clothes contract throughout his career, hasn't he? It's only recently he signed with Dunlop. Uh, wasn't getting paid by Prince previously, uh, had no clothing contract for a number of seasons, even though he's ranked inside the top five in the world. That's phenomenal. I think the good thing about coming Love up against 30. Nadal this evening uh, is that Davidenko knows he has to play his best, but flip side of the coin is true. Nadal knows, given that he's lost to him the last three times he's played him, that he's only his very best will do this evening. So he started very brightly.
got to be careful now when he misses that first serve. Love 40. Dahl's been very effective going off to the second. The first three break points have come speedily. chance at all there under the cosh right from the very start a wonderful game from Nadal and by two games and the Spaniard draws first blood gets the break to lead 2-1 that's Joe Wilfred Songa he played well in the second set today but uh, was outplayed in the first and ended up losing in straights but uh, nevertheless been a pretty good week injury free that's always a bonus and he's played just enough to feel pretty good about his game heading down to Australia. Ah! 15 love. Fifteen on. Davidenko's confidence. He's got to try and win a couple of protracted baseline 15, rallies. 30. Find a way back into this opening set. Both these guys love moving the ball around the court. Especially Davidenko. He's never shy to change direction on the shot. So you're going to see both these guys doing a lot of running. You're going to see some explosive footwork. It's always good eye candy when these two take to center stage. not only just to make the distance but then what a shot he was able to play such difficult circumstances but really good call coverage from the doll well, phenomenal tennis isn't it it's just jaw dropping stuff and what running the fourth game plenty to still look forward